Good morning again. We're going to start in about two minutes while we wait for additional folks to join. Uh, in the meantime, we'll share a, uh, a nice overview video from Regato, and then we'll get started. From office and retail spaces to transportation and logistics, the Internet of Things is transforming business operations and customer experiences everywhere. The problem? Most IoT solutions are vertically siloed and require dedicated sensor gateways, resulting in redundant, complex networks and multiple SaaS fees. The solution? A unified IoT network that seamlessly integrates with existing IT. With Rigato, you create a shared network for all IoT devices using existing network infrastructure, delivering data to the cloud more efficiently and securely. Our downloadable Edge Connect software enables existing Wi-Fi access points and routers to connect any sensor, eliminating the need for dedicated IoT gateways. With Edge Connect, you own all the sensor data. We deliver it straight to your application and can even create multiple pipelines to different cloud destinations. The best part? It's all managed like an IT service. With Rigato Edge Direct, you can remotely modify and upgrade devices, monitor sensor health and battery life, and send it to other monitoring tools using our Edge Health API. Make sure your IoT strategy doesn't include a proprietary shadow network for every use case. Leverage existing networks and manage it with Regato to get the flexibility and scale you need. Reach out to us for a conversation about your IoT transformation and visit us at regato.com to learn more. So thank you all for attending uh, today's webinar on managing IoT networks with Edge Direct for Enterprises. Uh, we have a special guest today, Kimberly Clark, professional, uh, is going to be uh, presenting a little bit later on. But first, I want to um, welcome in advance here, uh, Jeremy, who is our VP of Product at Regato. And I think this is Jeremy's first official webinar presentation. So welcome, Jeremy. Thanks for being on. Yeah, thank you. So uh, for those of you that um, haven't been on a Regatta webinar before, a couple of notes. Um, we're going to record the presentation and send it to all the attendees. Um, so don't worry about uh, taking notes or anything. You'll, you'll get to see the presentation. Um, we will put, um, please put questions into the Zoom Q&A panel. So on the Zoom app, there's a, a Q&A. You can put questions in there. We'll answer them throughout the, the webinar and, um, and take some of them live, even if we have time. And if you have a follow-up or we don't get to your question, please reach out to us at contact at regato.com. So uh, with that, uh, here is our agenda. Um, so first, we're going to do a quick introduction to Regato and our enterprise IoT networks. This will be a very quick review of, of Regato or introduction for folks that aren't super familiar with us. Then I, I really want Jeremy to go um, into Edge Direct for Enterprises. He's going to give an overview of some new features we have. He's going to do a, a live demo, which we're really excited about. And then we have a special case study and guest, uh, Dr. Balaji Kandadai from Kimberly Clark Professional. Now he is in India, so the time zone is a little bit off. And so he was kind enough to record a five minute video where he is going to talk about their solution and how they use Edge Direct uh, for managing um, their smart washroom solution across thousands of sites. So we're very excited for that. Uh, and then we'll do a wrap up in Q&A. So the total program here is going to be about 30, 35 minutes, and then we'll leave some time for a question and answer afterwards. So with that, um, let's jump right in. So with Regato, you know, we like to say that we're powering the unified IoT network, and we do that for global oil enterprises um, in a variety of different vertical markets. We've been uh, around since 2010. Um, you might know us from Bluetooth applications. We're deployed in over 100,000 commercial spaces. Uh, we have a lot of expertise in low-power wireless. Um, today, what we're really bringing to the market is this idea of a unified edge network that can be applied in a number of different verticals. And we have a lot of partnerships that you see listed on this slide, just a few examples, with infrastructure providers, with solution providers, systems integrators, uh, network providers. So what Regato um, 
our story is all about providing that edge connectivity and getting data into the cloud. Now, I always like to talk a little bit about enterprise IoT adoption because uh, this is something we've gotten from Microsoft IoT Signals. Uh, there's been a real shift in the market towards adoption from the uh, proof of concept now to the deployment stage of things. We're seeing a lot more adoption of enterprise IoT. Um, and, and the reasons are multiple. There, there are a few really big reasons that are driving that. One is uh, the increased revenue opportunities for IoT implementations, whether it's in, in grocery, retail, hospitality, um, logistics, healthcare. Uh, companies are just seeing a huge increase in their revenue opportunities when they deploy smarter technologies on the edge. Uh, there is a improved efficiency and productivity with IoT. We're seeing increase in operating income from companies that transform themselves digitally. And then uh, the last point there, the improved product or service quality with IoT. This is an interesting one because it's going to tie into what Jeremy talks about later with providing quality of service and managing the edge network efficiently. I think until recently, it's IoT has been a real challenge because deploying a network and monitoring it at scale has, has held a lot of these companies back. Uh, what Regato brings to the table is the ability to monitor that and manage it at scale and make it look more like an IT service. So uh, what is a unified edge network. So in the past, uh, what we've seen deployed are what we call shadow networks. You see these silos, vendor one, vendor two, et cetera. Each use case having its own sensor, gateway, application, silo. And this creates all sorts of challenges, kind of like that video that we showed earlier on. Uh, it creates overlapping networks. It creates inconsistent data and security gaps, uh, more installation cost and management. And we want to eliminate that by creating one unified IoT network. So what Regatta has done is created a solution called Edge Connect that can tie different sensor types in together, feed data in a unified way into cloud endpoints, whether it's Azure, AWS, something custom, and have it all managed by uh, Regato Edge Direct for the endpoint management and tied into whatever application the vendor or solution provider is creating. And by doing this, we can eliminate all of those data silos. We can reduce the amount of new network infrastructure that has to be deployed, and you can create consistency and experience across all those different services. So what's Regato's role in the end-to-end -end solution? Uh, so we work with sensors on the left to connect them and bring them online. That's going back to our expertise in low power wireless and Bluetooth low energy and things like that. Um, so we work with a lot of different sensor partners to create uh, new integrations. Uh, a lot of our customers will bring a sensor, a custom sensor that maybe hasn't been really used very much or has been used only with maybe a local phone app or something. And so we're very good at integrating custom sensors and getting them onto a network. And then uh, we pre-process and filter that data and make it cloud ready heading to the right where you see sensor data going to the data applications and then network health data going up into uh, Regato Edge Direct. So that's our role in the whole ecosystem. Uh, and more and more, we're seeing customers adopt our idea of running Edge Connect software in a Docker container uh, so that they can use their existing network infrastructure. Uh, infrastructure. We also have uh, our Cascade Gateway, which is uh, a, a product that um, we've had for a couple of years now that's deployed in thousands, you know, tens of thousands of networks. And this device um, can also provide that connectivity for sensors to cloud. Uh, and it provides a lot of uh, out-of-the-box certifications with uh, Azure, AWS. So if you need something that can quickly onboard sensors into a network, we have Regato Cascade as well. So Really, no matter what your um, commercial space or enterprise space may be, if you have existing infrastructure that can run containers and run Regato or you need something, we can provide it. And this really comes around to our unified network approach. So uh, you want to get sensors and intelligent data out of a physical space, and you need to pipe that into whatever cloud infrastructure you may have. Um, Regato helps facilitate that. In a, in a partnership model. Uh, and there are many benefits to that approach. And then you'll see, we talked about managing and monitoring the network like an IT service. 
And that's where we get into the topic for today, which is uh, what I want Jeremy to talk about, which is what does it really mean to manage and monitor IoT like an IT service? How do we do that? And what is Regato bringing new uh, now? What are some of the new things that you can do, whether you're an existing Regato customer or somebody that is looking to uh, deploy something in the future? How does that happen? And with that, we want to talk about Edge Direct for Enterprises. And I'm going to hand off to Jeremy, who's going to talk through a couple of slides and then uh, get into a demo. Yeah, thanks, Steve. So um, yeah, going on what Steve said here, Edge Direct is really your IT management service for your IoT here. We're not going to be ingesting your data, the sensor data. We're not going to give you a data analytics platform, but you want to be able to manage it and keep it up uh, like you would an IT network. So really, there's three major components of what that, what that does. The first here is our remote health monitoring at scale, which includes the ability to remotely, via our cloud-based platform, uh, you know, organize hardware, track it across the globe, see if it's up and running, if there's any issues that need to be addressed there. Uh, you know, as important as that monitoring ability is the ability to actually manage and deploy updates to it, which is uh, a major challenge. So Edge Direct provides remote secure software, firmware, and configuration update management tools. We provide gateway security, CVE, security, uh, CVE updates as well, and also includes scheduled rollouts uh, ability. And all that is secured with our role-based access control. So it can be integrated with your existing single sign-on service, allows for self-management of user accounts with access levels, and secure authentication for our API integrations. Okay. To manage millions of devices across hundreds or thousands of sites, Edge Direct has a, a kind of a tiered architecture here. So what we do is we group, group hardware into two different categories, and then which are assign them to sites. Sites is a mechanism for bundling hardware, such as buildings, campuses, or office spaces. Uh, this can be used to create simple roll-up health views and notify users of any issues really quickly. It simplifies configuration management by creating a top-down configuration structure so you can set it once and then it deploys to all of your hardware. And that also can be scheduled and automated and protect it from un unwanted changes with our maintenance windows feature. The first category of hardware here is our gateways and containers. So as we talked about earlier, that's our IoT connectivity hardware and software that converts non-IP low power sensor data to IP data to send to your cloud. Uh, which is Cascade Gateways and Access Points and Router Partners that run our Edge Connect software. For this category, Edge Direct provides really full digital twin services there for cloud backup and data recovery and management, uh, along with some software revision control and networking management tools. And it monitors the software performance and intelligent health reporting for issue notification. Second category are those IoT devices. So think any type of IoT, environmental uh, sensor, occupancy sensor, asset tags and cameras, typically low power wireless devices. For these, we also manage connectivity and routing, which is pretty important for non-IP sensors. So it provides things like data deduplication at the edge and failover for IoT sensors. Uh, Edge Direct also provides property and configuration management for these pieces. So there's a lot of sensors out there. You want to be able to track where they are. You want to be able to assign where they are, what they're doing, and be able to change settings on them. Uh, like gateways, Edge Direct also monitors performance and creates health notifications here. So zooming a little more to the digital twins update management, because this is something that can be really difficult at scale, is uh, you can see that this model is built around separating all the configuration components, which there's a lot uh, at the edge in this complex system, into really simple you know, buckets. So we have the system software there and the network and other system settings, and then Edge Connect, which is the IoT data device management flow. And Edge Direct stores these configurations in a stateful way to allow us to A, schedule or roll out things, uh, schedule and roll out those features and then B, track the rollout status by comparing the data reported by the edge hardware, hardware via that secure network config, uh, connection to the site. And then 
Third is off, allow us to basically, if something happens to that hardware, we can recover and replace it easily because we know exactly how it's configured. So say a gateway gets factor reset or a sensor gets destroyed, you can simply put in, plug another one in or it'll sync or the gateway will sync itself back up and allow it to just recover automatically. So for IoT devices, that's really more managed through Edge, Edge Connect. So that IoT radio connection there and that wireless IoT connection. But Edge Connect does report back to Edge Direct and give you a real view of those IoT devices and configure those properties like we talked about, which we'll see a little more in the demo. So as I said, Sites is a top-down management structure for generic configurations, and we keep all those configurations. But sometimes you need individual configuration pieces per device or gateway. So say something like a cloud authentication uh, string for each device, because you can't have 100 gateways share the same credential. So we use configuration variables in that point, at uh, that place. So you can substitute in individual pieces for a at the device or a gateway level and allows it to be still use those general configurations. All right, that's enough for the slides. We can jump into the demo now. Great, I'll let you take over the sharing. Okay, that look good? Looks great. All right, so when you first log in, you're directed to our sites page. Uh, which is, you can see here on the left is our toolbar and you can hover over these and see which different pieces they are. We'll get into the other ones a little bit later. For the sites you can land on, there's two views here. There's a map view and a table view. The map view uses locationing to basically kind of show you here's where, you know, visually your different sites are. So we can click into it and get some details off this pane and some overall view of health. You can also go into the table view and get a more in-depth view of what's going on in the site. You can see quickly how many gateways there are, when the next maintenance window is scheduled, if there's a scheduled update, how that's tracking and applied to it, and other location and context information. If we go into a site here, we'll get even more details. Again, you'll get some of that same details up here in this first tab. There's a couple tabs here to kind of manage and, st and structure how you can, uh, what you can see on these sites. Uh, you get this site health overview, which is really quick. We can see there's, an, so there's some errors here we need to deal with, how long it's been in those error states. If you scroll down, you can get more of that health health overview. We can see quickly here, there are nine gateways active, uh, assigned to this site. It's managing 655 sensors. Three of those are in issue state. We can get some more details on that, as well as all the configurations look OK. So we can see these individual health issues here and probably click directly to them and figure that later, along with being able to mute them if we don't really care about them anymore. But we'll circle back to that in a couple minutes. To move on to our maintenance tab here, which allows us to set our maintenance windows. This is really flexible, a really flexible way of locking down a site when you don't want things to change, but you can also then automatically schedule those rollouts. So this one's set to monthly. There's also quarterly and weekly and then immediate options here. Right now we're configured to the second week of the month, first day of the week, Sunday, and about 3 a.m. local time there. So this will roll out on Sunday morning at 3 a.m. This now, I mean, this controls how you roll out your configurations. So getting the configurations tab, there's a lot to, there's a lot going on here, but it's uh, really neat how it works. So configurations are separated out to these four different categories for this piece. Uh, app set is how you configure Edge Connect. We can go into here and edit this. And we can see here's the list of recipes we're using, which is basically our pre-configured libraries for different sensor types or different solutions. You see there are four off-the-shelf sensor recipes already configured in this device, uh, in this site, and there's a custom inline recipe. I think believe this one's meant for managing e-ink displays. And you can see that directly below here in line in our JSON and how we configure these digital twins files. NTP and server time zone, not too exciting. You can set those servers and what local time zone everything's on. Network here controls the network settings for the internet backhaul between the gateways or containers and the edge and the internet actually. So we can see here, we've set up a office Wi-Fi setting here. You can change some different advanced settings here. There's Regato Corp network and the password here is in here, but it's protected for readback security. You can add another Wi-Fi configuration. You can add ethernet. You can even change the, do advanced settings like static IP. Uh, or other or other network settings, and you can add cellular connection if there's cellular gateways. 
I can see here I have Wi-Fi set up, but I don't actually have Wi-Fi region. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that to worldwide since we're operating in the US this time and submit that. Oh, but I'm inside an outside a maintenance window. So it's gonna ask me if I wanna queue that and schedule it, or if I really want to, I can type in authorize here and overwrite it and push it out immediately. So I'm gonna go ahead and queue that. Coming back here, now we can see there's a scheduled update for network to roll out the next time we have a maintenance window that opens. We can see a quick view of overall health issues, which is pretty clean right now. We can also select which edge direct cloud we'd like to talk to. So we support multiple endpoint ingestion between the edge infrastructure and our edge direct cloud management platform. This one's con configured to run Azure right now. You can see these raw, these raw digital twins files down here. So we can look at our network we just set and say, hey, here's our Wi-Fi. And we can also see that this key is still protected here. So there's no way you can get this data out once we call it protected. So, and down at the bottom here, we have configuration variables, which are, like I said, like I mentioned earlier, our, configure, our ability, ability to substitute in specific things for at the site level or even the individual gateways. So there's an Azure connection string here that we're gonna set at the gateway level. So there's no default value set. It's also other things like you can set desired firmware versions for sensors or configuration pieces. This one, we have a update interval for our occupancy sensor that'll set it to once an hour. The last two tabs here are really a what's assigned to, this, to the site. So we have gateways over here. We can see all nine of our gateways. They're all operating pretty well. No real complaints here. We'll get more details on that in a few minutes. We go into our devices here and we can see our total number of devices, 658, 652 of those are active. We have three that are unassigned, which are typically, you can actually manually unassigned devices. We can sort by status here really quickly and see what those are. So we have three e-paper devices that have been unassigned at this point, or, and there's three in error state. So we can kind of see when they've been last seen, what their ID is, what gateways recording them currently. But if you remember back here at the beginning, you can also, we can also have gotten that information right away. So let's go ahead and click into one of these devices here and see what's going on. Now this redirects us to our devices tab over here. You can see from the toolbar on the left. This table shows us all of our devices across all sites globally. You click in and it automatically opens up one of the detail panes here, which gives you an overall device status health, which is an error. It hasn't been seen really. Uh, this one actually doesn't report, uh, is reporting a couple different things. So we see the location where it is and we don't really know what's going on. So we probably need to alert somebody on site to go check this piece out check this piece of device out. Uh, gateway reporting is very important as well because we can also see here's this, this gateway, which has last seen it. It's in error state. It is assigned to it. These other gateways have seen it. It can show us when it was last seen and if it's assigned or not. So these are offline because they're not trying to manage this device. If we click into a healthier device here, we can get a little more interesting information. So you can see here there's active device status. When it was, seen, when it was first seen, when it was last seen, uh, the current battery level here, the firmware revision, if there's an LED enabled, these have a indicator LED you can turn on and off, uh, what the serial numbers print on the unit and the location again here that you can set from our cloud side for tracking. There's no health issues here, but now you can see that all of these gateways here have seen this sensor. So we have nine that are active from this site. You actually have one here from a different site that is not reporting because it hasn't seen it in nine months. But we can see that sorting by assigned here, we automatically are routing to pretty much the best signal strength gateway we have. So if we go ahead and click into one of these gateways here. We can, we can go over the gateway tab and see this same detail table for gateways. These are all of our gateways across all of our sites in our organization. Opening this, you can get some rich performance data and health data right away. So you can see here how long it's been alive for, when it was last seen, what the CPU memory usage is. There's historical table, tables and graphs here as well. There's also some useful information when tagging we call, and what we call tags, where you can say, hey, here's the network patch panel for the switch it's going to and what room it's in. Uh, you can always track everything to the site up top and see and then click back through to get to that site. In the networking tab here, we can get actual real-time information on what the data usage is, what interfaces it's using and what's active. We can see here that it's on ethernet by default right now and using that data, using that interface. There's the Wi-Fi configured, but it's not actually connected right now. We wanna get into more detailed information. 
there are logs down here. There's a logs tab where you can request actual logs from the gateway. And that data will all be rejected as well for any secrets. Uh, there's a events log here, which is also very useful for tracking down what's happened here. So this gateway rebooted about a day ago, which is why it was first seen about a day, day ago. So we can see why that happened. Moving into the configuration tab, this is kind of a mirror of the sites, but this is the view of the gateway. So it can say, hey, I know these four configurations. I have them applied currently. It also knows I'm configured to the Azure cloud, so it's tracking all of that. These are, again, those same device twins we store here so we can recover for it and check against that when the gateway checks in. And we can see down here, here's that Azure connection string we were talking about earlier. With the value, if we want to edit it, it's actually redacted. So that's actually a hidden value as well. So we can set any of these variables to secret. And that way, once you put it in, nobody else can read it back out. And it only sh is shared with the gateway. You can also click in here and see the devices view of this specific gateway. So we can see the list of all the devices this gateway is currently assigned and managing. You can see that one issue sensor is still here too that I hasn't seen since it was rebooted. You collapse that and you can see the much larger list of devices that are unassigned. These are devices that it is seen, but it's Edge Direct just told it, you don't have to worry about that because it's assigned to a different gateway. That kind of wraps up the gateway, I mean, the active monitoring portion here. There's also other tools we can use, such as tag keys, which help you set these site and gateway level tags for user for setting up your metadata and context. How you can configure configuration variables here. And we have some networking and uh, installer tools for, as well for aid there. We have a link to our docs portal, which gives you in depth detail on how to use all these tools again, written out, as well as our API portal for our publicly available APIs, which includes tools for actually testing and doing your own development against our API here. Uh, moving down here into user management, as we talked about, there's role-based access here. So we can see the list of users as an administrator. You can open up one of these users. You can set their role. There's different roles with different levels of access by default. So this is a read-only account. And you can restrict them only to certain sites, restrict all non-admins to only certain sites. So if you have an installer or a partner or a customer who needs access to the site for something specific, you can give them access and they will have any visibility to any other sites you don't have, give them uh, access to. Okay, Steve, that pretty much wraps up our demo here. Yeah, thanks, Jeremy. And I hope that uh, as folks are watching this, they see the same thing I do, which is this looks a lot like a network management tool that you would normally see for, you know, Wi-Fi access points and clients, but, but used for IoT networks. And that's kind of what we're going for here, right, is making it familiar, um, but more for sensor networks. And I think there was a, a question in the Q&A, which I'll let you address uh, in the Q&A, because I want to get to Dr. Balaji here. So, so great demo, Jeremy. We'll come back to you with some questions, I'm sure. Um, sure. But with that, I'm going to bring in Kimberly Clark um, because uh, they are, uh, you know, a large, you know, one of the largest uh, smart washroom providers globally, and they have deployed Regato both with our Cascade gateways and our Edge Direct platform to facilitate that. So this is about a five-minute video. Um, and I'll play that out and then we'll come back and do some Q&A. Again, keep, keep the questions coming if you wanna type them in and we'll address them live when we come back. So here's uh, Kimberly Clark. Hello everyone. My name is Balaji Kandare and I work at Kimberly Clark Professional as the global product manager for Onvation, which is a connected software solution for smart restroom servicing. At Kimberly Clark Professional, our purpose is to create exceptional workplaces. We care about making workplaces healthier, safer, and more productive through a range of solutions, including hand towels, bat tissue, hand soap, and sanitizers, as well as industrial cleaning and safety products, as well as personal protection products. We are a $3 billion business unit within Kimberly Clark Corporation and have presence in over 60 countries. One of the common things we have heard from our customers is that the restrooms in office buildings, stadiums, airports, and the like are a source of pain due to frequent complaints from visitors. These complaints stem from the inability to stay on top of restroom servicing needs due to poor visibility into what's going on in the restroom. Traditional servicing is based on schedules and not based on demand. 
as a result, the likelihood for product runouts in the restrooms is high. Also, likelihood for throwing away usable product due to changing out roles quickly is also very high and is commonplace. So, what if you had visibility to restroom conditions wherever you are? What if you could significantly reduce complaints and work orders for waste? That is what Onvation can do for you. Utilizing real-time notifications, proactive maintenance, smart data, and analytics, Onvation can transform the restroom servicing operations, help lower complaints, and drive productivity up. What is Onvation? Onvation is a connected software solution to proactively control and optimize restroom servicing. It provides the intelligence and flexibility you need to deliver world-class facility management, improve operational efficiencies, and meet sustainability goals. By automatically and efficiently directing restroom cleaning operations that is based on real-time conditions, Onvation provides the intelligence to help customers achieve up to 75% fewer complaints and contribute to corporate sustainability goals with up to 80% waste reduction, as demonstrated in alpha and beta testing. Onvation leverages predictive analytics to alert you to issues and opportunities, taking a proactive approach to restroom servicing and labor optimization. Onvation increases operational flexibility by adapting to how you operate. Onvation integrates with your business and servicing operations by securely connecting to existing smart devices and systems, as well as providing adaptable cleaning protocols that boost team productivity. Onvation offers simple, intuitive mobile app, as well as a dashboard to keep you informed and in control, so it is very easy to use. So how does Onvation work? Onvation collects data from smart dispensers like our Scott Pro connected towel dispensers and tissue dispensers, as well as smart sensors like traffic counters and smart fixtures like connected plumbing devices. This data is then transmitted by Onvation gateways made by Regato, which securely transmits the data to Onvation Cloud. Onvation's robustly designed and scalable cloud platform ingests, transforms, and stores the data to serve on demand. Onvation displays the data as actionable information, both for janitorial staff, as well as the facilities manager to act on immediately, and to learn how to improve operational efficiencies and team productivity. At the center of Onvation installation within any restroom, is the Onvation gateway made by Regato. The C500 gateway contains the Onvation recipe that allows the devices to securely connect to the gateway and pass the aggregated data to Onvation Cloud. Regato provides a portal called EdgeDirect that provides remote visibility to devices and helps with installation operations. The EdgeDirect portal allows our team to view the gateway and device status, including communication activity, signal strength, on-off state, etc., and they're essential for troubleshooting. The portal provides ability to remotely reboot gateway, which is an essential capability for maintaining any electronic system. All of the device updates, like network configuration and security patches, are administered through the portal. Our on-base installation team uses the portal to assign the gateways to specific customer sites, confirm provisioning of all the devices that have been installed, as well as help troubleshoot any signal issues in the field. So as we close this topic, I want to highlight that we're committed to helping you drive your efficiency and productivity up through Onvation's innovative functionality. Let us know how we can help you if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at the email address mentioned here. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Bob. Okay, so uh, thank you for that uh, to Balaji and the Kimberly Clark team. And I'm gonna bring up our, our wrap up slide here. And I think we've gotten a couple of questions for Jeremy to answer. One thing I wanna do before we get to the questions is just highlight on 
on the Kimberly Clark front, because Jeremy, I know you've been very involved with that project. It's kind of interesting to see the evolution of that kind of started with Kimberly Clark, as Balaji you mentioned, trying to figure out a way to connect soap dispensers uh, essentially to the internet. And here we are now years later, and they've got a very sophisticated portfolio of devices connected through that network and then really fully managed. I think that last piece of it was what was missing for some time, right? They had a lot of, you know, frankly, challenges getting that management piece together, which we worked through together with them and and uh, helped evolve uh, Edge Direct as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it makes sense. And I mean, the management piece is what a lot of IoT str companies struggle with, and it's why we have a business and what we do, what we focus on. So we can focus on that piece. So everybody else can focus on their data and their analytics piece of it. And by doing that, and the way we've made it easy with Edge Connect, we can actually allow them to scale easier, as you said, uh, with adding more devices. And yeah, device and for those that are watching this, saying, "Well, I'm not in the soap, you know, uh, business. I, I may be in, you know, vaccines or or logistics or in in hospitality." Um, Regato plays in a lot of different spaces because we're solving the same problem for a number of different industries. Um, everybody that's deploying any kind of a smart sensor network is going to come up with, uh, run into these um, management challenges and need to solve them at some point. And so we can take that experience we've learned in, in these different verticals and apply them to, to other things. So um, we always like to say, reach out to us to talk about the projects you may have, and we can um, get into it some more. So let's, let's hit a couple of the questions and um, uh the first one was uh, asking about config the configs saved in, in JSON files. So what do you what do you have yeah. to say on that one? All of our configurations, all those digital twins are all saved in JSON files. It's easy to maintain and hold on to, and then we can say, send those down to the gateways or containers easily. So that's how we save everything uh, in the back end behind behind our web portal. Great. And then um, there's a question about version management control. Um, do we have a tool for that or is there something around there you can talk to? Yeah, absolutely. I actually skipped over that one in the presentation, but um, yeah, so we have a managed refresh tool which controls the versions of all the software running on the edge. So for our gateways, that's a complete containerized operating system. We do a version control for every single container that runs in there, including the core OS, and we have rollout tools for that. So basically how we would work there is we set the minimum revision for those control for those software. And then you can, and when the maintenance window opens, it pushes out to the gateway and the gateways come in and pull up those updates automatically. Uh, for the containers that works similar to, so we can actually push out container, uh, you know, when a container is running Edge Connect and needs an update, we can work with them and set it at minimum version so they can do the updating. Mm -hmm. And that same thing happens for devices, though that's usually more managed through Edge Connect depending on the device type. Great. And I don't see any other questions, so I'm going to throw one out to you. A lot of folks don't uh, realize that in addition to being our head of product, Jeremy also runs our solutions team here at Regato. And so... Jeremy, as I was watching you do the demo, I thought, well, if I'm an IT expert, I'm used to using these tools. It's easy. I can jump in there and probably figure it out. We've got the, the docs.regato.com. But there are probably some folks that, um, like Kimberly Clark, may have a project, but they're not I, IT experts necessarily. So um, how does your team work with companies like that? And, and um, what would someone expect if they come to Regato to, to get out of that kind of a partnership when they want to do a deployment? What, what's the engagement look like? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we have multiple forms of engagement. Uh, a lot of customers, like you said, have IoT sensors, but don't necessarily have that, that management backbone in there, in there. So we can work with them to help onboard their sensors, and actually build configurations for them. We have dedicated engineering to onboarding customers. And then we have customers, uh, a customer support team and representatives, which will actually work with your management team to uh, help train them on the tools, figure out how this works, work them through some pilots, help them get into production and be our be the tier two support behind it there. But the end goal is really to edge direct is a fully featured tool and you should end up uh, in production, if you have thousands of gateways, probably a dedicated management team using this tool or taking our API and pulling into your native management tool as well. Great. Yeah. And uh, I just want to uh, invite folks again, if you aren't, regardless of where you are in your on your IoT journey, um, whether you're at the very start and you're just starting to figure out even what what sensors you need to to solve a particular problem, 
or if you've been at it for for a year or two and you're just kind of stuck in that pocket pilot like we've seen before um, reach out to us and we can have that kind of early engagement with you and with Jeremy and the team and figure out uh, what the next step might be. So uh, with that, I, I think we're um, just about ready to wrap up. I want to thank Jeremy. Jeremy, great job yeah. on your first webinar. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Thanks, uh, everybody. Thank you for helping out and making it easy for me. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, and also for Kimberly Clark and Dr. Balaji Kandadai for their their nice case study and um, presentation. And to all the participants, thank you for joining in the questions. Uh, we will um, be sending out a, a follow-up email with a link to the recording and everybody can take a look at there. And again, if you have follow-up questions, uh, you know how to get in touch with us and stay tuned for uh, future webinars on, on different topics we're gonna have throughout the year. And with that, again, thank you for coming and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks all. Bye-bye.